One common activity in management is planning a large project which consists of a number of tasks which have to be done in the right order. A classic example of this at the moment is the London Olympics where they're planning and building the site for 2012. They have to get everything done in sequence. And the method of doing this is called critical path analysis. We lay out the activities in the correct sequence and we work out what's the quickest time we can do them all in, bearing in mind that some can be done simultaneously with others, but some have to follow others. So let's see how this works with this particular example. We've got here nine tasks involved in decorating a room. We start by cleaning the walls, which takes six hours. So We then have to wash the woodwork, it takes one hour. We have to buy the paint, it takes one hour. And washing the woodwork can't be done until we've cleaned the walls. So that needs the pre task A to have preceded it. You can buy the paint whenever you like, so we don't have to have any predecessors there. Then we want to paint the woodwork, taking three hours. And in order to do that, we must have washed the woodwork and bought the paint. We need to fill the holes in the walls, which we can't do till we've cleaned them, so that needs predecessor A. We need to buy the wallpaper, which uh, needs to be preceded by B and C, once we've got the um, paint sorted out and the colour. We then need to paint the walls, so we've got to have uh, painted the woodwork, filled the holes and bought the paper. That takes eight hours. We then do the second coat of painting the woodwork. This was the first coat. That's another two hours after we'd done the first coat. And finally, we want to lay the carpet when we finish the walls and the woodwork. And that takes three hours. So we've got this sequence of activities, or this total set of activities, that constitutes the project. We talk about project management, and we want to find out what's the shortest time we can do this project in with all these different tasks. Some of which, though, can be done at the same time as others if we have enough people. We might simply add up all the time, so we get 8, 11, um, 15, 25, 28. So the whole thing is 28 hours of labour. But if we've got more than one person, people can be doing some of these tasks at different times and we should be able to actually finish it in shorter than 28 hours. So the first thing we need to do to do critical path analysis is to get a network diagram of these activities. So we look at the task and see where we're going to start. Well, A and C have no predecessors. So we would draw this like this. Here's task A and here's task C. B can't start until A has finished. And later on, we're going to need B and C to be done. So we'll draw B like this. You can put arrows on to indicate the flow if you wish. What happens to D? D can only be done when B and C have finished. So D will come along here. E can start as soon as A has finished. So E can come over here. F follows B and C. So that also comes from here. So that's F. Sometimes when you're drawing these diagrams, you find that it's rather untidy. Once you've got the basic idea of the way that things link, you can then redraw it, trying to get them in a sensible sort of order. So we've got F. We've then got G, depending on D, E and F. So there's E and F, and D can come up here as well. H depends simply on D. So we need to be a bit careful here. And the way that we do this is by using what's called a dummy variable, a dummy activity, which I'll explain in a minute. So H comes after D, G comes after D, E and F, and then I comes last. The actual length of the lines don't mean anything. It's just a network to show the connections. 
as I say, this is a dummy uh, activity. Sometimes we do it with dotted lines. It doesn't take any time, but it shows that H follows simply after D, whereas G depends on E, F and D all happening. And then we can put the times in for the various activities. But the best way to do that is to work through from the beginning here to find out what we call the earliest starting times of each activity. Earliest times for starting. Now the earliest I can start A is zero, just when I begin. A takes six hours, so the earliest that I can start B is after six hours, and equally for E, because I can't do either of those until A has finished. C starts at zero, and C takes one, so the earliest I could start these, you might think, is one. But I've also got to have done B. So if the earliest I can start B is six, and B takes one, I can't have completed B until after seven hours. C only takes one hour, so the earliest I can start these is the larger of those two, seven. You can't start an activity until all the preceding ones have been done, and you have to wait for the slowest. Let's go along here now. I can start H once I've finished D. D takes three, and I couldn't start D till seven, so I can't start H until 10. What about G? Well, E takes two, and it, started, it could start at 6, so I could start this one at 8. F could start at 7 and takes 2, so that won't be finished until 9 hours. But even worse, D isn't finished until 10. That's the latest one, so that's the earliest I can start G. I've got to wait for D, E and F, and the one that takes the longest is to finish D. So they're both 10. What, could, what about I? Well, G takes 8, and it doesn't start until 10 hours. So that could start at 18 for G to be ready. And H only takes 2, so that will be ready after 12. So again, I go for the largest, 18. And then I itself takes 3, so I can finish after 21 hours. That's called a forward pass. We're going from the beginning to the end. What we now do to find the critical path, having found that we can do this project in 21 hours, not the 28 that we originally thought, what we now do is work backwards to find what's called the latest st uh, uh, starting times. So now we start from the end and work backwards, so we do this in pink. So let's suppose I finish after 21 hours. When was the latest that I could start I? Well, I took three hours, so I must have started at 18 hours. What about H? Well, H takes two hours, so in order for H to be ready at 18 hours, it didn't need to start until 16. So its earliest and latest starting times are different. There's six hours slack time. You could, you could start H after 10, or you could wait until 16. It doesn't matter for finishing the project. Whereas G does take eight hours, so in order to be ready here at 18, G must indeed have started at 10. It has latest and earliest starting times are the same. Let's now look at D. I need to be here by 10. D takes 3, so the latest that D can start is 10 minus 3, which is 7. 
f takes 2, so to be ready here by 10, I didn't need to start until 8. e takes 2, so to be here by 10, I didn't need to start e until 8. What about c? c takes 1. Now, I'm coming back this way. C needs to be ready by the earliest of these, the 7. C takes 1, so it could start as late as 6. Let's put separate starting times for A and C, rather than just single zero here. So C could wait until 6. It takes 1 hour, it will still be ready by 7. B takes 1. It needs to be here by 7. So the latest it can start is 6, and then A takes 6. Now, as far as E is concerned, it doesn't need to be there till 8, but for B to get going, it needs to be there at 6. A it takes 6 itself, so it must have started at 0. So what we find from this are what are called the critical activities, where the starting time, the earliest starting time, and the latest starting times are the same. And if we put these on now, A must start at zero, there's no leeway there. B must start at six, so that's a critical activity. D must start at seven, and it can come up here. G must start at 10 and I must start at 18. So those activities are critical, and we say that the critical path is A, B, D, G, I. A, B, D, G, I. Those are the activities which must be done exactly on time. If you do those on time, you will finish in 21 hours. The other activities can be done while these are going on and these have some leeway. This does assume, of course, as I've said, that you've got other people doing them. While D is being done, somebody else must be doing E and F, and similarly here for H and C. But those are not critical activities. You've got choice about where to start. So this gives us the critical path and it tells us that the whole project can be completed in 21 hours. OK, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? OK, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done. Well done.